Jesus, it says in uh, Jeremiah 23, 15. Jeremiah 23, 15. I'm sorry, Jeremiah 23, 5. Jeremiah 23, 5 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Everybody say, that's Jesus. A righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Once again, that's Jesus. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth. And so Jesus, the Lord our righteousness. Another scripture, another prophetic word, you see, that pointed to His coming. Of course, we know in Isaiah 7.14, we can go there. Isaiah 7.14, this is a familiar one. Isaiah 7.14, Therefore shall the Lord himself give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, you read Matthew chapter 2. It mentions that the Holy Ghost came upon her. And let me read it for you. Matthew chapter 2. And verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Of, she is pregnant by the Holy Ghost, in other words. The virgin birth. Hallelujah. And so, in, John, in Isaiah 7, 14, we're going back there again. He shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. God's with us in a whole new way. Not as this distant God that we can't come to, no, but as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And we're in an intimate, up-close relationship with Him. Emmanuel, God with us, promise never to leave you nor forsake you. He says, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the ends of the earth. And then we go over to uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. It says, For unto us, now this once again, this is, Hundreds of years before Jesus was born. And the prophet Isaiah. So Micah was a prophet. Isaiah was a prophet who predicted it. For unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Now where it says a child is born. That's talking about the humanity side of Jesus. Just like we have sons and daughters that are born. This is the humanity side of Jesus. A son is given. That's the deity side of Jesus. Deity. He is God. Yes. You know, i got a whole bunch of scriptures I could share with you. I won't do it now. That, that show that Jesus is absolutely deity. I won't give them to, all to you now, but He is deity. He is God. Down, on, uh, down at the plaza here in Elwood City, there were some people passing out some literature. And so I, I stopped to see what it was all about. Talked to the man and woman. Here they were Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> and so we got into a little discussion. <laughs> and I told them, you know, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, it says that whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So I said the word Christ there refers to his anointing and his deity. You must believe that Jesus is deity. And I told them, or you're not going to be born again. You're not going to go to heaven. Oh, well, we don't believe that, you know. I says, I know you don't. <laughs> so I told them that that's what separates the men from the boys, the, the, the true faiths and doctrines from the, the false doctrines and the, and the cults, 
is the fact that he is deity. And so here we have it right here. A child is born, a son is given. God's very own son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son who was sitting on the throne from everlasting to everlasting. He pre-existed. He gave his son who is deity. And so we got into a big discussion about that and the gifts of the spirit. They don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. And they don't believe, you know, uh, they say they feel they're earning their way to heaven by talking to people about Jesus. And, and so uh, I, I said, I tried to give them a track and they wouldn't take it. And I said, that's right. You won't take mine. I'm not going to take yours then. <laughs> you know, but anyhow, we sort of, uh, they had to go. They had to leave. Anyhow, they, they were in a hurry. They had to get going. So <clears throat> let me give you those scriptures, and you can look them up later. 1 Timothy 3.16 proves the deity of Jesus. Ephesians 3.9. Of course, Isaiah 9.6, which we just read. A son is given. Uh, Romans 9.5. Colossians 2 9, John 1 1, and Hebrews 1 8. There's a little homework assignment for you. You can check those out. <laughs> but let's get back to our scripture here in Isaiah 9 6. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Here's Jesus being called <clears throat> Mighty God. Further proves his deity, right? The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, glory be to God. And of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. So we've come to worship Him tonight. We've come every day to exalt Him, right? Because His name represents deity. He is deity. And so therefore, when you use that name, there is power behind that name. Because of his deity. And he allows us to use that name. We're not like the sons of Sceva. You know Jesus, and so you're allowed to use that name. Sons of Sceva, if you recall, didn't really know Jesus, and they tried to cast demons out of somebody, and uh, they, it didn't work, and so the demons tore his clothes off and beat him up. Remember that? <laughs> so you, you have to know Jesus. How many of you know Jesus in here tonight? In fact, let's take, take a minute right now, make sure you, everybody does. And he said, how do you do that? Well, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. Amen. You believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you speak it out of your mouth. Let's just pray this right now, everybody together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. Jesus is the Son of God. I know He died for my sins. He was raised from the dead to justify me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all my past sins. Thank you for loving me, for saving me, and for a first-class plan for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I gave someone else a track the other night, and they said, I said, this will be your best year. 23 will be your best year ever. They said, well, 23 is almost gone. What about 24? I said, it'll be good too. <laughs> it's true. Why? Because you prayed that prayer. You made Jesus the Lord of your life. How many meant that in your heart? Amen. So he's Lord of your life. You accepted him, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. El Kabor. El, El Kabon. Wait a minute. What is it? G-A-B-O-R. Yeah, El Gabor in the Hebrew means Almighty God. You've accepted Almighty God into your life. Hallelujah. So, we see Jesus is both humanity and deity. That's what they call the hypostatic union. He's 100% God and 100% man. He's not 50% God and 50% man. 100% God, 100% man. He is God incarnate, God in the flesh. And he's, came, he's come to redeem his people from their sins and give them eternal life. And to give you a better existence in this life. So that you can live life to the full measure. Live life to the fullest. That's what he wants for you. Glory to God. 
That's why I'm excited about sharing the gospel. Because when I do, I know that I'm sharing that the people can get their lives turned around and live their life to the fullest. Glory to God. Amen. He wants you to live to the fullest. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to have a good emotional and mental attitude, good mental health. He wants you to have good relationships. He wants to see you and your children and your families uh, just coming together in the love of God and being blessed. Like we said Sunday, there's a power in God's love, isn't there? There's such power in His love. We found out Colossians 1 12 to 13, the Bible says that he's delivered us out of the power of darkness and he's translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. The son of his love. God sent Jesus because he wants the world to experience his love. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus at Christmas. Now the plan of redemption wasn't fulfilled then until he went to the cross, but he gave Jesus that you and I might have eternal life. And we might have live life to the fullest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You mean God's really for me? Absolutely. He's not against you. That's right. Amen. And so getting back to the deity part of his, his name, that's why it's so powerful. Go with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. That's why we exalt him. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. The man at the gate, beautiful. You recall him? Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus. Remember that name that's connected to deity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And what happened to the man? He took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with him into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Why? Because of the power that is in that name. All of heaven backs that name. Matthew 28, he says, All power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. All power in heaven and earth, has been given unto Jesus, and you are connected to Jesus. You are His body. He is the head. And so you have access to the power that's in that name. Look what it says over there in uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Verse 16, it says, And His name, and this is what the disciples are saying, And His name, through faith in His name, you got to have faith in that name, has made this man Strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It was the name. It was the power that's in that name that raised that man up. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. Went into the temple, never, before, never again having to ask for alms. That's what he was doing out there begging, asking for alms. Hallelujah. So it's the name. He says, this wasn't anything we did. Notice over there in chapter 4, verse 7. It says, and when they had set them in the midst, it's talking about the religious people who arrested them for healing this man, basically. And they said, by what power or by what name have you done this? Huh? By what power or by what name have you done this? And... Uh, He said, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of the synagogue, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all people, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised him from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. We didn't do it. It was God that did it because we have access to the power in that name. Deity. Hallelujah. That's a powerful name. Glory to God. You just mention the name of Jesus to somebody. 
You're put, put, giving them the Word of God because the Bible says His name is called the Word of God. So if you mention the name, you're giving them the Word of God. You're dumping the whole New Testament on them when you mention the name Jesus. Isn't that right? Glory to God. How about uh, verse 10? Oh, we just mentioned that. How about verse 12? So it says, is, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under which under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's no salvation in any other name. Muhammad, uh, Buddha, anybody else. No, there's no salvation in any of those. Those guys are all dead. Jesus is alive. He's risen from the dead. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. No other name under heaven, We're given among men, whereby we must be saved. So it's the name that gets you saved. He is deity. And so he gives you entrance into heaven, cleanses our sins, washes us in his precious blood, and gives us access to heaven. I'm so happy about that tonight. How about you? Woo! That's reason to rejoice, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. Verse 17 and 18. It says... But that it's, this is what the religious leaders told them now. All right, we, we understand that the power is in the name, and so that's what you told us, and so here, here's what we're telling you, you have to do. The authorities are telling them, but that it spread no further among the people, these miracles, these healings, that it spreads no further. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more in the name. They can speak, but we don't want them to speak in the name any longer. Because they knew that that was the key. You can't speak anymore in the name. Verse 18, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. You guys, no more teaching, no more praying for people in the name of Jesus. That's what they're saying. Well, what would the disciples say? For we cannot, but Peter and John answered in verse 19 and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. You judge it. We're going to listen to you or we're going to listen to God? You know, we're to obey the laws of the land. But there are some times when we don't have to obey the laws of the land. And here's one of them right here. Okay. And so, he says, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard from God. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. I'm telling you, 5,000 more people got saved when they saw this miracle that was done in the name of Jesus. This is a powerful name. And that's why he just wants us to love on him. He just wants us to worship him, extol him like that song we sang tonight. Set our love upon him. He is our king, our glorious king. And we come to worship him tonight. We come to celebrate his birth. And so let's stand tonight. It's a powerful name. Verse 30, I'll read that one to you. It says in verse 29, And now behold, Lord, their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching forth thine hand and that signs and wonders may be done by what? Everybody say it. The by the name of thy holy child Jesus. That signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in the name. That name neutralizes Demon powers and defeats them. I said it defeats and neutralizes demon powers. The name that's above every name. Hallelujah. So let's, when we pray for people, pray in the name of Jesus. Our prayers are supposed to be John 16, 23. We're to pray the Father to the Father in the name of Jesus. He gives us a pattern for prayer. Praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. He says, whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do it. Right? 
Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. I will do it. So, it's the name that gets the ear of the Father because He is deity. I'm so glad. We can't, I tell you, God does not want us to lose sight of the supernatural. He wants us to get hungry, to see miracles, to not let the intellect dampen your belief system. Every believer is a candidate for miracles, and every believer is entitled to use the name that will break the powers of, de- of darkness and get the captives set free. Amen? Hallelujah. You're going to go forth in the name and use that precious name. Glory to God. Father, thank you tonight for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that we've come to know you, and we want to know you even better, Lord Jesus. We want to know your love, for you are love, Father. Thank you, Father, that you've shed your love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And it is out of your love that you sent Jesus at Christmas time to redeem mankind that was under the law. Thank you, Father, for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to hear one more joke? This is one Fred gave me. I thought it was good. A mother was concerned about her children, no, her kindergarten son, wait, walking to school. He didn't want his mother to walk with him. She wanted to give him the feeling of independence, but yet know that he was safe. So she asked her neighbor, Mrs. Goodnest, if she would please follow him in, to school in the mornings. Well, Mrs. Goodnest had a daughter named Marcy, And so her neighbor was up early and needed the exercise, and so she agreed. So the next day, the the neighbor and her little girl, Marcy, Mrs. Goodness and Marcy, set out following Timmy as he walked to school with another girl he knew uh, from school. So he did this for a whole week. As the two kids walked and chatted, kicking stones and and twigs, Timmy's little friend noticed the lady following them each day. Do you know who her... And who she is? And Timmy nonchalantly replied, Yeah, I know who she is. Well, who is she? The little girl said. That's just Shirley Goodnest, uh, Timmy replied, and her daughter Marcy. Shirley Goodnest, who is she and why is she following us? Well, every night my mom makes me say the 23rd Psalm to protect me. And the Psalm says, Shirley Goodnest. And Marcy shall follow me all the days of my life, so I guess I'll just have to get used to it. <laughs> hey, have a good evening. God bless you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Crimson stain